God's honor code. Honor refers to something or someone you refer with high respect, great esteem. Our parents who are here and our children, there are people you honor. When you honor them, you give them respect. You give them uh, a certain quality of being able to say they are right and they are able to show and bestow something to you. Last Sunday, we were looking at sacrifices, worship, and a way of esteeming God with our sacrifices. A code could be just a program of instructions. It could be mm, something that defines you. For many of us who have read different books, we have penal codes, we have dress codes, we have HR code, but you know dress code. When they say, what is the dress code for this occasion? It means, how should I put on my blouse, my skirt, my shirt, my tie? It defines you a code, a discipline that you ought to have. Bridget Hammond, in his book of contemplative faith, wrote, when we read the lives of the saints, we are struck by a certain large leisure which went hand in hand with the effectiveness. They were never hurried. They did comparatively few things, and this not necessarily striking or important, and they trouble very little about their influence, yet they seem to hit the mark. Every bit of, the, of their life told their simplest action had a distinction, an exquisiteness which suggested the artist. The reason is not far to seek. Their sainthood lay in their habit, their heavenly God. They sought God. Those were the saints of the old times, of referring the smallest actions to God. I want you to underscore that, because if you miss that, you will miss why I'm talking about God's, um, uh, God's honor God. They lived in God. They acted from a pure motive of love towards God. They were as free from self Regard as free from slavery to good opinion of others. They possessed God and possessed themselves in God. They honored God and his word. Those were the saints of people that grew up. And they could trust God. They would wake up one morning and they believe God will educate my children. You know, I was looking at a video last week. And I remember when we were growing up, Elder. We go to Sunday school, and your mom knew you'd be an engineer, but they could give you a half a book of 32 pages. They would cut it, and they tell people, this is my engineer. It was a small act of faith, and we trusted our children would make it. And mama would wake up every morning, and he would give you just a simple, many of you But these people, and some of our parents, had a high respect that our children would be presidents. There were small acts that were actually rooted in a belief. And that is what I want to look at. Is there a God that we can actually believe in his God, in his way of prescription, and trust him, and be able to move on and trust him very fully? I want us to read Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Mark chapter, one verse, Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. The Bible enumerates and says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many heard him, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? They asked. What, what, what is this wisdom that has, has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Is in this the carpenter? You can imagine they're asking, is this the carpenter after the IMS? Is this the carpenter? Is this the Mary's son and the brother of James, of Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are in his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed 
at their lack of faith. That is the word of God. The context of this scripture is that Jesus was born in Nazareth. Actually, let me just go with my notes so that I save time. In this scripture, we learn that our ability to honor other people reflects not only how we see them, but how we see ourselves under God. You need to underline that. How do you see yourself? Now, the Jews in that particular time, they saw themselves of high regard. And Jesus was born from them. He was doing miracles. But they were not seeing that. They were not seeing God in those miracles. And so they get the message of the miracles, but they cannot see the one that was doing miracles. So from Jesus, we learn those that we give honor, most honor. They give the list. Jesus went back home. My when we came abroad, my brother Laban is come. When you go there, people are appreciating the UK. But we could have a good name. No, 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 no. Now Jesus goes back to his hometown. After doing those many miracles, by the way, he didn't do the first miracles in. in. And then, when I'm all these, where was to make sure that I go, Nelima and Joseph, now all that. He also did some miracles and they saw around. And they say, ah, we also know his home. But now, even instead of referring to him after doing the miracle, that this is the miracle worker, the only description they would describe Jesus is in this the carpenter's son. They could only remember the least job you ever did before you became a principal. And so they ask, is in this the carpenter's son? They could not remember where Jesus was standing and what Jesus was doing. And by that, they disregarded Jesus. And remember, Jesus now is operating in the full office of Christ. Christ is an office. When you talk about Jesus Christ, theologically, the office of Jesus was Christ. I actually have no problem with other Jesuses because they don't have the office of Christ. Now, I'm teaching you theology. We had so many Jesus, even a footballer, but they don't occupy that office of Christ, which is an office of the sainthood and the operation of God upon Jesus. And so when Jesus actually continues and stays around, uh, he looks at these people and says, I am Madarao. She has the power of the office of Christ. <laughs> he actually felt dishonored and he actually responded. Now you will go with me after understanding that. So let's consider this passage. Craig Rochel observes that Jesus had returned to his hometown, which is Nazareth, and there he was actually born but not raised there. But he had been on regional tours teaching the word of God and performing miracles. In Nazareth, he had, retired, he had actually turned water into wine. He did those miracles, not on people. Water into, he raised the dead. He opened the blind eyes. He healed the dead. He multiplied the loaves and fish. But when Jesus returned to Nazareth, fresh on heels of all these miracles, but then his ministry hits the wall. He could not do, um, do these things for his own people because they lacked faith, because they lacked honor. And that honor made him not to do many things. A few things that I want to mention as we go this, that every society has its honor court, all of us. And by the way, for some of us who are young, one of the things why I'm preaching to us is learn the code. Today, some of you will be attending the devolution conference. You must know how to behave on the roads. You must know how to behave at the gate. You must also know how to behave at the table. That's why I'm preaching to you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is a sermon of teaching. Some of us don't know how to behave. God has a prescription. Every society has a prescription. I was watching on TikTok yesterday. If you're going to marry from Racholi of Uganda, where I come from, you don't walk on foot when you get to the door. You actually go on the knees. Now, if you walk on the feet to get a Choli girl, you have lost it. They have a cord of you going to actually get the lady on that final day. For many of us, you know what you do for acceptance. So every society has a cord. And also God 
has his God. Amen? So God's own accord is that God has a prescription. And when I was going through this, and I've been reading another book that many of you want you to go and read, it's called um, Alter Ego. Alter Ego. Ego. Yama, eh, kuna, kuna ka, ka, kamaringo kakuwa kwa madhabao. Craig Croce says, and all of us when we know God, we must possess him and approach him with the due honor he deserves. Amen. So that it doesn't look like we are proud. There's some ego that God actually expects that you do. You kneel before him. You pray before him. You give him the adoration. It will look like it's pride for you. But it is called alter ego. It can only be done on the altar. So Jesus and God has a call that we need to have. But Christ is dishonored in his own towns for after many miracles. God calls us to several honors in our society. Tell your neighbor, God calls us to several honors in our society. I want to look at four. There are so many honors that God calls you to. Some of them you not believe. Some of them you not agree with me. But they are in scripture. Honor code number one. Honor your parents. Amen. When Jesus goes back home, this is what we do. Ukipata pesa mzuru na rudi nyumbana lapo na zema unaona na ringa ringa tumekuwa tukilala nja. You are just coming back to honor your parents. And God actually expects you to honor your parents. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12, we see a cord of honor of our parents. And the Bible says you should be able to honor your father and your mother. That is the commandment of God. And so in God's eye, you are supposed to honor your parents. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2, children, you must be able to have read this. The Bible says honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with with a promise. Now, God, in his prescription, actually asks you to honor your parents. Today, as we live, and honoring your parents doesn't matter whether your parent is educated, whether goes to church, whether he's a Muslim. You are, God expects you to honor your parents. Now, honor and the other things of worship are different. It is that you must honor your parents. God calls us to honor our parents. We can show honor our parents through this because I don't have much time. You can, if you want to disagree with them, respectively disagree. Okay? You should patiently listen when they talk to you. I have realized even some of us who are learned, we can be summoned by our parents. I don't know whether... <laughs> I have one of my grandmother. When things go wrong, your uncles just say, Kuna mutu. Then you are summoned. No mesoma, where in the principal. I don't know whether it happens in your place. But I've seen home. I have now, when, even if your parents are not there, we have one person that has been given the role that can summon you. And he talks to you and he makes sense to you. Unaitu ata unaweka hapo prado yako. Unasome wa vizuri. Na inaingia. God expects it that it will sink through your parents. Say amen. amen. Even as our children, when you do mistakes, you actually ask your parents to come to school. I was a teacher and I was a, a deputy by then. I was handling discipline matters. Now, Lisa Kijana, I'm ready for Baba Aka Kujenu Shulen. Sasa ndiya muambie, because we had asked him to, to lie down, we came him, he refused. So we asked the parent, we want you to ask him to lie down. And he refused. So we thought that this is a joke. We say that you will ask your parent now to lie down. He said, proceed. The young man was very rude. Now, that's why I'm preaching to you this sermon. God expects you to honor your parents. And you can patiently listen, patiently, freely forgive, regularly communicate. For many of us who are adults here, try to call your parents oftenly. Let's not be people that are detached from parents. Faithfully visit. Some of us don't visit our parents. Very few of us are doing that through our MCCGs. God expects you to have a connection with your parents. It doesn't matter what they have done for you. I know some of us, during the time we are getting married, maybe they didn't behave well. I am here to tell you, God expects you. In fact, it's one of the command with a promise. Number two, God expects you to honor government leaders. Honor code number two. God expects that. I can tell you, if all of you become 
<laughs> by any chance, and I none of you will be able to accept this unless you become a missionary, that you become actually a follower of, um, of Somali, whose president is a Muslim. God expects you to honor that leader, irrespective. Our deacon was here. I thank God he's not here, not um, preaching this. During the Wednesday, was take, we are praying for the leaders. We don't necessarily actually honor our leaders because they are spiritual. But the moment they are inaugurated and they are put in those particular offices, God expects you to honor them. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7 says, let everyone be subject. Let everyone. You need to be paying attention to that. Let everyone be subject to the government, governing authorities. For there is no authority except which God has established. The authorities that exist has been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels now talks about men of us. Uh, sorry, we like going to the streets. I should be careful here. Sorry for whoever rebels against the authority. If his rebellion against the authority is bearing against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment, just like you do judgment on the Holy Communion on yourself. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of one in authority? Then this is the antidote. Do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. When I read this scripture, I was looking my friend, I know some of you who have questions, even some of our leaders, whether they are true leaders. The Bible says they are God's servant. But if you do wrong, be afraid. Now, if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of right to bring punishment on wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit now, read that again. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So God expects us to honor our government leaders. When they come here, most of the time you see a sitam will ask and acknowledge them. It's because we honor them. I know many of you, we are Bible-believing church, and that's why I'm preaching to you. If the president would walk in here, we would acknowledge them because they are our leaders. And we don't discriminate so long as they are in the office. At one point, when we had the Prime Minister, Raila Dinga, that time they had government, Nusumukata said, why was it I'm making your friends with this? And I remember this scripture, and I remember even Bishop Oginde clarifying, he is a government, he is a God servant by virtue that he hold or held that position. God expects us to honor our government leaders. God leaders are not only those who are believers. I want you to know that. But those who have the opportunity to lead, if they have been put there by the constitution or by this, then God will expect us to do that. So we do that by we pray for them. It doesn't mean when we lay our hands to them. And that's what you do to one of our pastors when they do that. The other day we were organizing a dedication of the county. We invited all of them to come. By virtue of us praying for them, we are showing honor to them. We pay taxes. Don't avoid to pay taxes just because you think that God expects you to honor and he says be able to pay taxes if it's revenue, if it's respect, if it's honor. So there is no thing that can actually hinder you not to honor our government leaders. Amen? Number three. Honor code number three. You are pastors and charge leaders. This one I should not say. It should be automatic. But I can tell you the world where we live in. Yeah? We are always on suspicion like any other. Now today, I was reading First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. And the Bible says, The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those work is of preaching and teaching. 
It is God who is speaking here. Am I preaching my things? I'm speaking about God's honor court. We expect you to honor your leaders in the church. And the Bible speaks the same. Because I'm the one preaching, I should be careful. One of the things that you are going to realize is that you will only be blessed by the grace you honor. You will continue to come to this church year in. Reverend Petronilla is not with us yet because he's doing membership. Part of our prescription in a membership class is that you observe us one year. One year is not meant to delay you. One year is for you to observe and understand. Can this grace be a blessing for me? And we give you that chance to accept or to decline. Most of us think that it's for, for actually a denial on your end. It's for your good. That the day you choose to come to sit down, you feel the freedom to enjoy the blessing. Otherwise, if you continue to come in this place, and you don't feel the honor of your senior pastor and your elders, you may stay here until Christ comes. Because again, variably, our elders listen differently. They can listen after three years, my elder child. They can listen after two. So come on, I imagine two more up. I can tell you, you will suffer. You know how much five years is? That's some of the period I'm praying to be here. So if you're suffering, one of the things I want to help you understand is just choose to honor, or else I will do a few miracles and go. <laughs> Hallelujah! This message is sweet. This is the Bible speaking these things. You will suffer. One of why some of you have come here because the grace could not operate those sides. Some of you have been in ministries where pastors are lifetime presiding ministers. <laughs> so Leona to Jikate. Sasa umekuja hapa usivumilia. I'm teaching you today. You will have to start to adjust. Hallelujah. Is it possible that you might be looking down on your spiritual leaders and yet you expect to be blessed? That's a question I'm asking. All true honor is born out of heart. I'm trying to teach us, but I'm not trying to compel us. Surrender to God, King of Kings. Where we read the first scripture about Bridget, it talks about that these people referred everything to God, and I will be coming to that. It is a matter of the heart. From people that actually rebel against their parents, for the people that actually rebel against their leaders, and the, both the national and the church leaders, more importantly and more uh, uh, analytically looked at, it's a matter of their heart. Their heart is always wounded. And they, are, they just feel there is something else. Psalm chapter 22, verse 23, the psalmist say, You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him. All you descendants of Israel. You cannot actually honor God when you don't honor his servants. And that's why you talk about the government leaders are governments are God's leaders. When Jesus was going to Nazareth, because the Jews even up today didn't recognize that he was the promised Messiah, did not actually even see him as a leader. They didn't see him as a servant. And by that then, they rejected both the servant, the message, and the God in totality. In that sense, is what the Israeli say, you threw out the, the baby with the water and the basin. They threw everything there, and so they were not blessed. Jesus did very few miracles in that place. We should stop um, uh, treating um, uh, God the way we just think. Honor code number four. Honor code number four. And that's where I was... Honor God. Now, while I talk about this, it's not in any here. Like I would have talked of four because I've not talked about husbands. Honor your wives and etc. But you come to realize that God, in his baseline, he expects us that we honor him. And that's where we have read. We should stop treating God as common or ordinary. And many of us do that. I continue to actually urge us. One of the things that I'm trying to pray God to fight in the current dispensation is the unbelieving believers. Craig Rochelle actually has written another book. I read many books. It's called Christian Atheist. Now, you may want to go and read that book. Christian Atheist. 
the unbelieving believers. The people that cannot see and refer the smallest acts to prayer. How many of us are married? Just see by show of hands. Just lift your hand well, you are married. How many of us in the last one month have prayed with their high wife and husband? In the last one month, mushkana mukono mkaomba. Just be frank. Yeah, the hands are fewer. That is how unbelieving we are. In fact, one of the things that Craig Koshe says is that actually, and it really hit me. You guys might need to go and read. We are unbelieving. I'm looking at you, my brother. We pray long prayers in the public because we are praying very brief, not short, very brief prayers in secret places. That is how bad we have regard, disregarded God. When I was going to school before and then I loved to serve God, time is gone or that clock is faster. My uncle could literally, I would think I should finish by 10.30, I'm cautious of time, I have some five minutes, would literally pray for me every day. And I honor him for that. How many of us do that for our children? And I'm saying this because God seems to be taking a very small percentage of our life. In fact, when some of us succeed, and you tell people that God has helped me to succeed, people will doubt you first of all. They say, which God? Kwanza unafanya Kenya pipeline. Uko kuna pesa nyingi. So just say in Kenya pipeline. They can't believe that God can use Kenya pipeline for you to be blessed. That is how far we have dishonored God. Jesus performs miracles to his own people. But people would only the carpenter's son. And then they would also remember his sisters. Maybe because they don't even drive the Prado. Because God can bless you and you can drive a company Prado. So by virtue that your family don't not know and you have never explained to them. They disregard you. And they say, oh, he has been this way. And so they say, ah, we have seen his mother. We have seen his brother. They would even have said that we saw him being born on a manger. The Nazarites disregarded Jesus to that level. And imagine, Jesus walks away and he does a few things. Is it possible that Jesus and God is doing very few things in our midst because we have not honored him? Is it possible? It's very possible. And he will not argue. I want to put you in the same situation that you are the boss and you walked in this church and could be. And you came to this church and you were mistreated there at the gate. Nuluko mebeba bahasha ulisikia tunatenda anniversary ya watu wanataka ngombe mbili ukasema leo ndato. Lakini bila ufika pale. Waka ku dishonor. Hautatoa mfukoni. I can tell you. Utairudisha kwa mfuko na tukamaliza benediction you will go with it and then ask where else can I be given? We actually, and God deserves honor. Amen? You have ever gone to a place, for many of you are dignitaries, and you are not honored even where to sit. <laughs> Bishop Gigi Masinde, no, no, Gigi, our uh, deliverance was telling us, he came to one of the meetings there, and uh, they didn't honor him. He said, he didn't know that I'm a senior clergy in this city. He just said, allow me to go home. And anyway, he had nothing to, actually he didn't enter that meeting. This is what I see in Jesus, and I see in God. And why I'm preaching this is that it believes and actually seems to me that we are not seeing great miracles when you have great people because we have not honored God. When God gives us that small car, do you give God thanks? When some of our children are going to abroad, do you give God thanks? When you get that small promotion, I know it's small because in the government there are no big promotions like we see in the private sector. Do you give God thanks? When that day you had no meal and somebody buys you a meal, do you honor God for that? Because Jesus did variable miracles right from healing and multiplication of bread. But when he was dishonored, the Bible said he left that place. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 17, the Bible says, Submit yourself to the Lord's sake, 
to every human institution, whether to a king as one in authority, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God, that by doing right, you silence the ignorance of foolish people. Act as free people and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as, as, it, as born servants of God. Honor all people. That's why I say I should have done like 10 chords that God expects us to do. Husbands, wives, submit to one another, you know, those kind of things. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear the Lord. Honor the king. Honor the king. You may want to question whether the president is a truly Christian or the deputy or your governor. But the Bible asks you actually to give them honor because they deserve that honor. Praise the Lord. In fact, some people have gone at a place and say, now then if you don't honor the person, honor the office. That is not my preaching. The Bible asks you that honor the person and his office. Hallelujah. And you will be blessed. But when we find people are rebellious, I can tell you, we will not go anywhere. The president will keep quiet when he's angry. And my friend, we will suffer. Some of you have power. Have you seen sometimes you have food to the store and the people abuse you? You just keep quiet. You keep quiet and people will sleep angry. <laughs> honor the king. I am preaching to this passionately. Dangers of dishonor. <clears throat> William Shakespeare or Shakespeare says, My honor is my life. Both grow in one. Take honor from me and my life is done. What actually William Shakespeare means is life and honor go hand in hand. It's sad that even this thing is being recorded. One of my sister is not patient, She's very angry. And at one point when we are being sponsored by our uncle, I'll So she refused to go to school. My friend, where will you go in this country without school? I told her, I wish you persevered for how many years? You know, at one point when I went to school, I remember I told you and I told my wife, I want to suffer three years. Some of you need to choose some suffering. For now, even for this government, for some of you who think otherwise, you have four years to, to show honor. Patiently. Hallelujah. Kuvumilia. Okay? And then you will be blessed. Now, kuna watu wengine hapa, they are suffering. Some of us, he actually can't submit to our wives. His honor code number should have been four and then God put five. You will suffer in that marriage for all of your life. Because until God calls her or him home, you must be there. <laughs> so life and honor go hand in hand. A man that cannot honor anyone in life, be careful. Ladies, if you're getting married to a man, no naona kama yo kijana nilikuwa na punish, naambia paka baba yake lala china, nasema siwe ulali, huyu akakuja kwako, ni shida. Hata wewe ukiwa tu patient kama vile angels. Unaona hizo angels liko na natembea na Yesu. Nowhere you will go. Honor and life go together. Employ somebody for good skills. But if they cannot respect the authority, I can tell you from my shortest time of supervision, that is done. In fact, it's called insubordination. You should be sacked on spot without blinking of an eye. Sam Chan does many of uh, his avail leadership. And he said, it is possible for you to actually lead people who don't love you. But it's very difficult for you to lead people that don't honor you. Now, this is difficult. And I can't force you to actually honor somebody. But now he asks leaders and he says, seek ways to make people honor you. Ani muneza ni chukia hapa. Lakini mkosa tuku ni yeshimu ni ngumu. Hii gari ayendi. Flat tire. Flat tire, I can tell you. This is a heavy message. You will think about it and you go. You can do a writer thesis. Mark chapter 5 verse 6. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few people and hate them. This honor breeds contempt and blocks God's blessing over your life and destiny. It is a selling that actually protects you. You can't. Put it the other way, people have called it loyalty. There are better than those who are educated 
and they cannot honor. I can tell you, you can go and do another thesis. We can discuss in another Kamkunj. You've seen the people, they are closer to the brain. Some of them may not have a lot of brain. I don't know how you measure brain, but Mualimu can tell you. But by virtue of their honor, those guys can take you somewhere than those who are brainy and they can't move with you. Beauty of God's honor card is that, and I'm talking about God because it's only if you cannot honor your parents, if you cannot honor your government leaders, if you can on, not honor your spiritual leaders, you cannot honor God. That is why I'm saying God, honor God. Are we together? What is the beauty here? It unleashes God's blessings. The grace you honor is the one that blesses you. Jesus did miracles outside hometown. Yani tunaweza kuwa tunaishi hapa na mvua inanyesha huko nje. Kuna siku by the way I had something like that. But that is weather. But God controls weather. <laughs> you can actually be staying home. Lakini mwenye anakula chakula yako ni mtu mwingine. Because of lack of honor. You could be earning money, but it's not blessing you. Honor is a critical component of our worship and prayer, particularly the honor of God. And you need to know it as actually a masterpiece. How do we honor parents? We cannot have children who love God and they don't honor their, their parents. We cannot have husbands who love God and they do not actually love their wives. We cannot have actually wives who love God. In fact, you at Unaimba Apa Muzuri, Nauko Nyumbani, Ukienda, Hey, Unaongi Hanga to Eh? Mutu Aliambia Sisi Jews to go to pastors, uh, pastors, uh, retreat and spouses. Akasema, some of us, Bila Wat Nasab Mung, if we served God, if we served our husband the way we serve in church, now you will go to pastors, Zinyi, Akwambia, they would be heaven at home. You didn't get that. You will get it when you go home. Conclusion. Everyone has an authority over his or her heads, be it at home, church, society, or in their existence. The critical question is to allow authority over your life to be a blessing. Let the authority not be a selling of punishment of, no, let it be a blessing. I want to pray for us.